Hey everyone, welcome to Meeple Bits. Thanks for joining me today. While getting together in real life for a great board game night is incredible, it's not always possible. And for those times when it's not possible, thanks to the great community and the great guys that develop Tabletop Simulator, it's even easier for you to host your board game night from anywhere in the world, no matter where your other gamers happen to be. So I wanted to bring you guys a new segment for Tabletop Simulator and do a couple how-tos and reviews using this program. But today, we're going to go through a couple of tips and tricks about using Tabletop Simulator so that when you dive into your first game using this program, you'll be all the better for it. So stay tuned as we go through a few of those tips and tricks and getting you set up so that you can easily dive in and navigate Tabletop Simulator. So let's go ahead and dive in and test out a bit of the navigation so that on your next digital board game night, you are better prepared. So to begin, I hope you have the game Tabletop Simulator, but there's two options in the main menu, aside from the uh, social navigation on the left side. There's also a chat in the lower left that um, I've got closed for now for this demo. But you're either going to join another player's game, whether that be a publicly available game that you want to drop into, or a private game hosted by you or your friends that you'll probably know what the game is and the password. Or you're going to create a game that you want to either host for single player or multiplayer. So for this demo, let's do single player. Now the game does come preloaded with some classic games like Mahjong, Chess, Go, etc. But for this demo, let's go ahead and just take a quick peek at some of the components so that we can understand navigation. So here's just a simple uh, layout with some pieces, some dice, and some cards to give us a quick idea of the different things and elements that might be available for any game that you look to play. So to begin, navigation. Well, like many games, when you're moving, this one's no different. W, A, S, D are going to be your friends. W to move up, S to move down, A to move left, and D to move right. This way, you can easily move around the board or the table, however large that may be, and get to what you need to see. Next up, zooming. With the middle mouse wheel, go ahead and zoom in or out by scrolling your mouse wheel up or down. That way you can get a better idea for the detail of the components that are available and see a little bit closer anything that you might need. Used in conjunction with WASD, you can move and nav to your heart's content. But let's say you're positioned a little bit differently and something is facing the other way, like this knight piece here. Well, using your right mouse, click and hold, you'll be able to pivot your camera and get the perfect view for whatever it is you need to do. In conjunction again with WASD, you'll be able to figure out exactly where you need to go to see exactly what you need to do on the board. Next up, grabbing pieces. You can left click, which will and then left click and hold will drag a piece. Same thing with a die. Left click, hold, and move. Now, with a deck of cards, it's a little bit different. When you left click and hold, you're gonna pull up the entire deck. So in this one, you just wanna quickly left click and move. This way, you drag a single card off of the top. Then to grab everything, left click, hold, and drop. Next is going to be rotation. So with any object like this chess knight here, using Q and E will allow you to move them. You can either pick them up and rotate them or mousing over them while they're highlighted will allow you to rotate those pieces. To pick up multiple objects at a time, like dice, you can either click and drag your mouse, highlighting multiple pieces, and then move them around, or holding control and then left clicking the different objects that you want to move all at the same time will highlight them in yellow, 
so that you can then move them around. Once you have your objects selected, you can let go of control. Click out into just any white space to remove your selections. So that's it for the basic navigation. So let's go ahead and dive into some things that are, I guess, next steps. So once you're ready, to take those next steps into moving and grabbing pieces around the table, let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So to begin, you can click on the dice, drag and hold. You can click and drag to select multiple objects, all the objects. But let's say with dice and with cards, with dice you can click and hold on the dice, shake your mouse around, which will roll the dice for you, and then give you a roll. With a deck of cards, when you click and hold on the entire deck, shake your mouse around like so, it'll give the deck of cards a shuffle. Dragging from the top will allow us to then hand out any specific cards that we need to do. In addition to that sort of navigation, other important keys that you're going to want to be familiar with are going to be flipping the cards, viewing them, and things of that nature. So flipping cards, when you mouse over an object, you can press your F key and it will flip anything, cards or tokens. So for your cards, you can either click and hold and press F, understanding that flipping it in this capacity will display it to the entire table. If you flip a card and need to see a better view, well, you can zoom in like so, or let's say you're all the way out here, you can hold your Alt key, and that'll allow you to see a larger view of whatever object you're mousing over. Cards, dice, pieces, everything available. Now, in some cases, you might need to see a card or something of that capacity. In order to do that, you're going to want to hold your left key and then press shift. This will allow you to peek at that card. Notice the eye icon here on this card to indicate that it's been peeked at by the white player. In addition to mousing over objects and picking them up in that way, you can hold your control key and simply left mouse on certain objects to grab multiple of them to move them around. Click in any white space to remove the selections that you've chosen. For dice very specifically, you can press the R key, which will do an automatic roll. And that's it. Those are your basic controls and basic navigations for getting around Tabletop Simulator. Now, another piece that you're going to want to be familiar with is bringing cards into your hand. So, if I were, say, dealt this particular card, is there more than one card here? Hmm, no, I guess just the one. See this little box area for the player. Now, these players are not on the table, but I could hand them cards all the same. These are now cards in my hand. So I've drawn them into my hand, and they are face down so they're not being shown to anyone else. So I can put them face up, but understand that these cards that are over here, these are very specific to what I have. If I need to get rid of them, I just take them out of my hand like so. Or if I needed to pass a card to another player, I would move it into their zone around the table. So if I had to give a card to purple player, I would just do it like so, understanding that notice that it's got a question mark when displayed. So in my hand, this is how you hide cards that others should not see. And now lastly, let's take a look at the Steam Workshop, because this is where the real magic is going to be unlocked 
While the game does come with a set of basic games, chess, cards, mahjong, etc., in the Steam Workshop is where a lot of the magic is going to happen. There are games that are published by the game creators themselves, which are available as DLCs, and a lot of times these work so much better. But don't let that hold you back from at least exploring the workshop to see what's available for games that you hopefully already own. So coming in here, you're going to want to select Games, Workshop, Browse, and it's going to bring up the Steam Overlay. Using this Steam Overlay, you're going to be able to then browse through and peruse the many options that are available. Right now, it's sorted by most popular. And as you can see, some of the ones that I've already downloaded are part of that most popular list. So I don't really know offhand what game to go and, and download to add to the collection, but let's say uh, that was, um, well, I want to do a game that I do own. And, I, and that's going to be, let's say, Tiny Epic Galaxies. Oops, if I could spell it right. <laughs> Find a game that looks good for you. Click into the game that you want to add into your collection. And then click subscribe. That way, you'll be able to add any of those games into your collection. And they will immediately be added. So I'll hit subscribe here. Oh, those are just tokens. Don't want to do that. That's the complete version. Hmm. Well, you guys get the idea. Add games, subscribe to them, add them to your collection. Then they become available here in your list of workshop games. So what does that look like? Well, let's click into Splendor and see, just to give you an idea of what's then available. So right now, I'm the only person, person seated at the table. There's no real way for me to add other players, so when you're adding anyone else, you're going to make sure that they're seated at the table as well before clicking Setup. But once you do Setup, it's then going to deal out automatically in this particular game the different types of cards and what needs to happen. Now from there, you're going to have to then grab cards and bring them into your hand like so. Holding Alt will let you view them a little bit closer. And then up here is kind of your general play area when using cards. But anyway, guys, that kind of gives you a quick idea of how to easily navigate through and be able to play some of the games. Now, all of them are going to be different in terms of usability, but the navigation remains fundamentally the same. F is going to flip over cards. Alt's going to view them. I could reshuffle this deck uh, as an example. Let's drop that card in there. There we go. Nope, you stay in there, okay? Grab tokens. I could even rotate them as I see fit. Different tiles, etc. So anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the uh, quick, you know, uh, tips on using Tabletop Simulator. To see more of this, I do plan on bringing them to you both in um, a how to play tabletop simulator games where, like Splendor here, I'll probably go through um, a little bit of navigating and actually doing it. But to do it in a better way, I'm going to make sure that I bring a couple extra players to the table so you guys get a much better idea of using this program. Well, I hope you enjoyed, guys. If you have any questions, please leave comments down below. I'm happy to answer them. And maybe dive into more of a, an advanced uh, tips and tricks into Tabletop Simulator. But until next time, guys, thanks so much for watching and thanks for the support.